Welcome to the data center. Here, we've got access to all kinds of information, including car telemetry, weather, lap times, tire wear, the list goes on. Plus, we've got a direct link back to the factory, so we're in constant communication with the team there. We need you to regularly feedback about areas of the car that are lacking and help us direct our resources in the most productive way. More effort here equals a quicker car, so it's well worth the effort. Good luck this season. Oh, and make us all look good, okay? Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of this 2019 season mod career mode. We're driving for Alfa Romeo, if you could tell by the thumbnail, but it's going to be awesome. Obviously we've got Kimi Raikkonen as our teammate. Fresh new season, brand new start at this team. Um, it's going to be a difficult season. The car obviously isn't exactly where we'd like it to be at this point. Um, it's a bit all over the shop, especially... Um, in terms of R&D, if we're going to have a little look at how far down Alfa Romeo is, the engine isn't too bad. Uh, that's mainly because it's obviously uh, a Ferrari engine. So that's not too bad. It's not great, not near the top, but the aerodynamics is god-awful. It's actually worse than the Williams, um, according to this. But we're going to look at the chassis again. It's not that great. Um, but obviously, you know, the drivability of the car is obviously a lot better than most of the teams. But we're going to have to upgrade this car as we go throughout the season and um, just see exactly what we can do to be fair um, it's going to be slightly difficult uh, considering how tight the midfield is but we're going to obviously do the best that we can we're going to have to see how it goes uh, especially in the early stages of the season which obviously is going to be quite difficult uh, try and find about where we are um, in regards to you know the rest of the midfield uh, hopefully we can be battling you know the McLarens which I think will probably be our main uh, main competitors and this season especially in the early stages and then hopefully we'll be able to fight the uh the renos the Haas, and you never know maybe even fight um for top six position from time to time but we're getting ahead of ourselves it's only the first round of the season and uh, we haven't even got underway yet but kevin magnuson there uh giving an interview for the start of qualifying now in q1 there was actually an incident with uh, robert kubitza and bottas so kubitza dives to the inside and bottas just collects him on his way around um, and obviously sends him a little bit sideways which probably didn't help with his qualifying but here is our um, Q1 time so obviously it was already in the top 15 to try and get in but it was getting a bit tight so we managed to uh, maximise a little bit more time and managed to actually get up there a little bit better as well but those are the cars that are out George Russell, Kubitz are followed by Albon, Norris and Lance Stroll who obviously didn't get in to Q2. Now this was weird. So I was just on our on our way back into the pit lane, and Hamilton just comes along and just hits into the side of us for no apparent reason. Um, quite bizarre. We almost go into the back of him as well as he slows down mid corner. But even from this angle, you can see he just veers to the left, um, or in our case to the right, and just just hits us. It was very weird. Um, you know, Mr. Five Time World Champion uh, showing us his boss a little bit, I guess. But uh, we were into Q3, but we, again, it was getting incredibly tight um, and on the fringes of being eliminated. So we had to set another time. You can see we're not up that much on our delta time, but it's just enough to maybe move ourselves up a uh, position past Hulkenberg just to just to kind of secure ourselves in that position. But unfortunately, Kimi Raikkonen didn't make it through. Neither did Perez, Carlos Sainz or Roman Grosjean. So that is the same that our teammate couldn't make it in to Q3, but... We're going to have to do the job here for the Alfa Romeo team. Coming in, we've got about two and a half minutes left in the session. We've already set um, a bank collapse in. Let's put us P7, which uh, in terms of bank collapse, you know, that's not actually too bad. We're almost five tenths up uh, coming into the last corner on our time. So this could catapult us up. Um, catapult us up amongst the pigeons. We're going to come across the line and you can see we were five tenths up and we didn't even get past Gasly. But we did... Another lap, and we did get past Gazi, so this time we're going even faster. So where is this going to put us? We're currently P6. We're going to cross the line, and it's actually put us into a... It's uh, put us into P7, which is a bit odd, but I can only assume our PA obviously did a better lap um, on that time. So other than that, uh, I don't really have an excuse as to why we struggled very much so. But nonetheless... We're going to try and get the job done as best as we can today and um, get this Grand Prix 
off and running in our first season and just absolutely smash it. I mean, we're, we're already in the top 10, so at the very worst case scenario, we're going to go backwards and uh, maybe we get a point. But as long as we, you know, we stay in the points, keep our nose clean, don't get any major issues, then you know, everything should be fine. But especially in Vettel, our man on pole position, doing an absolute phenomenal job. Uh, as per usual, so he'll be a very happy man. He likes being in first, given that little finger waggle that Sebastian Invel is, of course, known for. Pierre Gasly obviously did a little bit better um, than his teammate, qualifying ahead of Max, but um, not bad for the French rookie. So we'll have to see uh, what we can do. Our teammate, again, can't really help us out in terms of strategy. He's a little bit far back. Gunther Steiner there, looking over his car, hoping there'll be no more tyre issues, but you can't really trust Hash. Hash, Hass, can't trust Hass, so you're going to have to see, but we're going to have a look at the starting grid for you guys now, and um, obviously at, on the front, as you would expect, you can see Sebastian Vettel's bright red Ferrari alongside Lewis Hamilton's uh, Mercedes. Uh, on the second row, we do have uh, Charles Leclerc and obviously Valtteri Bottas, followed by row three, occupied by both the Red Bull cars, and then obviously ourselves and Nico Hülkenberg, followed by Daniel Ricciardo, and uh, Kevin Magnussen down in 10th place. Now in 11th place, Carlos Sainz followed by Perez. Our teammate Kimi Raikkonen and Kvyat. Lance Stroll, Landon Norris, P16. Albon and Kubica. And surprisingly on the back row of the grid, uh, we've got George Russell and Roman Grosjean who incurred uh, some kind of penalty. He must have had like a gearbox penalty or something like that to put him to the back of the grid. Fiddling around with our strategy just a little bit here. Uh, probably going to do a two-stop just for... Um, Maybe get a bit more overtakes done, you know, get a bit more feel for the car in a race pace. It's only, what, four seconds, give or take, uh, four and a half seconds difference. And I can't really see that being, uh, you know, a massive difference. But as you can see on the left-hand side with the tyre compounds, Bottas is actually on the super soft tyres, which will be quite interesting. Um, also with uh, the back of the grid, more or less all the cars outside of the top ten are on uh, super softs, apart from George Russell. So there's quite a bit of split in uh, strategies, but I reckon Roman Grosjean here is our star to watch. And there is the guy starting from the front of the grid, Sebastian Vettel, hoping to get away uh, you know, as best as he can, especially against uh, Lewis Hamilton. It's going uh, to be a difficult old day for Sebastian Vettel, so you never know what can happen, especially at the start of a season like this. You know, any reliability issues and you know, stuff like that. So we're just gonna have to do what we can. Uh, obviously, try and um, not maybe not hit Max, especially on the uh, especially on turn one. It's gonna be slightly difficult. Obviously, with the company we keep um, up this high at the end of the grid, it's gonna be incredibly difficult uh, to say the least. But we're waiting for the lights now. We're gonna flick our engine into a rich mix as we wait for the lights. We are underway, and everyone ahead of us actually gets off to a fantastic start. There's no challenge from anyone behind us at this point. So we're going to take a nice nice and easy into turn one. Uh, we actually end up a little bit sideways coming out of um, the first corner. But again, like I said, there's no challenge from behind. So, you know, we're going to take it nice and slow, uh, adjust our settings and uh, give ourselves plenty of breathing room to the cars ahead of us. And cars ahead of us, speaking of Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc, who are going side by side all the way through three corners now that is and coming into sector two and they're still going to be side by side but in the background you can see we're being challenged by Nico Hulkenberg who just dives up or inside and bangs wheels a little bit there with Max Verstappen but uh, Nico Hulkenberg getting the jump on us so we're gonna to have to try and get past him uh, coming into this um, little chicane I guess you could say to a certain degree but it's we're gonna end up going all on the curb and lose the back end which is gonna put us under pressure from Daniel Ricciardo and that's one person we do not want to be under pressure from especially in his home Grand Prix he's gonna be very very feisty as you come into this fast left and right but we managed to hold our position uh, we get a little bit sideways on the exit because um, we were out of position but apart from that it's not too bad but Ricciardo again on the following lap same place he's uh, looking to make a meal of us as we're gonna push him to the outside this time we're gonna go down the inside and cut him off, take the bollard out for good measure, but we hold that position. Um, Roman Grosjean, the man we said, will be a guy to watch today. You can see he's going round the outside of Robert Kubica on his return to Formula 1, but Roman Grosjean looks like he's got the move done, and he has indeed on the uh, Polish driver. But again, Ricciardo is coming back at us, and I don't know if you saw on the uh, damage to our car. We've got no DRS, and our rear tyres are practically screaming help me at this point but moving on to that five we've got Danny Kvyat who's getting a face full of smoke from the engine of Sergio Perez so Perez's engine has gone 
So that's not a great start for the Mexican as we hop in the pit lane. And Lance Stroll, the other racing point, has also got a puncture going down the straight. So both racing point are having a nightmare. And um, there's a VSC as Ricardo pits. So Ricardo's going to get the jump on us in the pit lane, which is a bit frustrating. But we'll have to try and claw that back as best we can. We've got Kvyat challenging Carlos Sainz at this point. Lando Norris has retired by this point um, with suspension failure. All I can say. That's all I'm going to say. But Kvyat still trying to go around Carlos Sainz. And uh, it's not working out very well. But maybe a few more laps at the time. But a man on the move is Leclerc. Is trying to get past Kimi Raikkonen. And Leclerc had an issue with a few of the other cars um, involving Lance Stroll. So Leclerc's dropped down the order quite a wee bit. Um... But obviously by this point now, off the passing rack and he has pit. So he's got to pass all of these cars yet again. But that's Daniel Ricciardo getting past Kimi Raikkonen. And then Charles Leclerc getting past the Haas of Romain Grosjean. So Leclerc, although we thought Grosjean was the man on the moves, at the moment Leclerc is absolutely steaming past these cars. He got Scott past, just got past Toro. So he's looking to go past the Williams as well. Very tight on the inside was Charles Leclerc, but he doesn't care. Um, as he's going to make that move. We can see the tire bumping between Verstappen and Kvyat. Kvyat may be a little bit salty. That Max obviously took his seat all those years ago. But we're coming up to the back of Kubitz. who's going incredibly slowly in his return. But we'll get the move done into the chicane. And then we come up to the back of Kimi Raikkonen, who hasn't pitted yet. So hopefully um, we can get past him as quick as possible. And if he's feeling nice, maybe he'll let us go uh, into this chicane. We're going to have a look down the inside. And yep, sure enough, indeed, he does actually let us go, which is obviously what we needed uh, to get past our teammate, not to hold us up. But... Um, you know, it's kind of difficult. There's another VSC, um, I'm assuming, for probably debris on the track. There wasn't a lot going on by this point, but there's a lot going on. But that gave Carlos Sainz the opportunity to jump us in the pit lane as we were tailing on two Ricardos. So we're going to have to get some kind of move done uh, coming into the braking zone here um, at turn three because if we don't get this done, we're going to be struggling. We're going to bang wheels if we're not careful, and we do indeed. We do manage to get past Carlos Sainz and up that position. But for sure, Carlos Sainz is going to try and come back at us again as he's got a lot more fresher tyres. Um, he's on the one stop. So at this point in the race, you know, his tyres will be a lot, lot better than ours. We managed to hold him back. But Charles Leclerc, um, not long after, is going to just pounce on him and just take him out. But Charles Leclerc, we're not going to fight you today, sir. You know, you're part of the senior team. We're just going to move over to the right-hand side, touch the brake pedal. Uh, we're going to let you go on your merry way. We don't want no issues from the bosses at Ferrari, especially with our bosses. But there's your race leader, Sebastian Vettel, on lap 17, uh, currently doing a stellar job for the Scuderia outfit. We pit again under a VSC. There was a lot of VSCs at this point, but that actually helped us out this time, uh, rather than being unlucky like the, the others were. The others were incredibly unlucky. We managed to gain some time on the Haas cars. But once again, that puts behind Kimi. And I had to get our elbows out a little bit more on Kimi that time to get past him. But got to show uh, the veteran driver that we're not we're not going to take him lying down. But again, Leclerc having to get past traffic. He's been in traffic all day. This time he gets past science, as we do not too long after. Again, getting our elbows out. Showing we're a bit aggressive. But um, this man right here, Leclerc, has just stormed the entire field so far today. He's been on the two-stop like ourselves, um, so he's just absolutely flown by. Roman Grosjean just absolutely blitzing uh, our teammate Kimi Raikkonen on the straight. So we're going to need to, need to look at our engine, um, try and upgrade that as best we can. But this point was too far ahead of Magnussen and too far behind Ricardo, So he was kind of just in a bit of a lull, uh, to be honest with you. But Sebastian Vell absolutely dominated the race. He was nowhere to be seen, led it from start to finish. Absolutely smashed it. So him and the Scuderia outfit are going to absolutely buzz in um, at this first round of the season. So fair play to him. Bottas actually came home on the last lap and got the fastest lap. So that's not too bad for him. Max Verstappen as well. Not a great race. Losing out to his teammate Pierre Gasly who finished third. But um, Charles Leclerc, a great race in terms of overtaking. But finishing P7 is obviously not where he wants to finish. But Kvyat finishing P9. Um, did a stellar job and then ourselves down um, in a lonely P10 um, disappointed from where we started um, I feel we could have done better but the car obviously was really difficult uh, especially on traction because I set the car up for qualifying it was really hooked up and um, obviously in the race that's not how we want it to be but Sebastian Vell obviously getting the job done on the first round of the season Hamilton he's there or thereabouts you know he's not too far behind and obviously got Pierre Gasly on his debut race getting a podium for Red Bull Racing. So they'll be chuffed with that. It's going to be interesting to see the dynamic battle between himself 
and Daniel Ricciardo for the rest of the season. But at least Ferrari have got the pace. It looks like Red Bull won the pace as well. So it could be a three-way championship this year. But we're going to have to wait and see how that one pans out. So there is your top 10 for the first round of the season. Vettel leading Hamilton Gasly, followed by Bottas, Verstappen, Hulkenberg in P6, declared down in P7 on that two-stop strategy. Same as Ricardo, um, split by Kvyat and ourselves, and Magnussen also on the two-stop strategies. But that's the top 10. Um, nothing really else has changed. So, uh, so we're back in our motorhome, uh, checking over the R&D points we got for this weekend and uh, going to look to upgrade something on the car. Um, judging from how what I experienced throughout the weekend and obviously seeing Kimi get absolutely blitzed by Grosjean, um, probably going to have to upgrade the engine, but obviously keep it under what Ferrari have because, you know, we can't have a better engine than Ferrari because they make our engine. So we kind of got some limits and uh, kind of some rules to uh, stick with in a sense. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see what we can do. Um, we're going to have to get that engine development done and that hopefully should arrive by... Um, before the Bahrain Grand Prix. But that's been it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed. Take care for me. Bye-bye.